Um, okay, welcome. Thank you for thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for showing up to our last event this semester in this academic year. Uh, we've had a number of events. Uh, I don't think that anyone of you except for me attended all of them. That's okay. Um, they're all on YouTube or will be shortly by now. So if you miss any, uh, you can subscribe to our channel and uh, find them there. Um, today's event is uh, sort of a fitting culmination year of work uh, for some of us. Uh, for Wesley, it was just a semester uh, of work. Uh, what we will do today is we'll take a look at the projects uh, that were developed by our colleagues uh, in collaboration with our language center. Um, in furthering and pedagogy um, and improving teaching. So today we have uh, Joao, Sonam, and uh, Wesley, who will be presenting the projects. Um, I will not be introducing these projects collectively uh, right now. Hello. <laughs> I'll not be uh, introducing the projects collectively right now. I'll just go to individual participants, presenters, uh, to do it on their own. Um, I think, Ajal, we've agreed uh, that I will nominate you to go first. <laughs> so uh, if you could. Come here, I'll say a few words. Uh, I, mean, I, think, I think everybody knows me here, <laughs> and say a few words about the project, uh, how it came about, and how the um, data you're trying to accomplish with it, and then to actually sort of move into the presentation. Okay, and then, so, uh, well, I'm trying to teach uh, Portuguese in the 11 different cultures uh, department, and I've been here for uh, five years now, and this uh, project is uh, it concerns uh, queer uh, pedagogy and teaching in foreign languages. And I have like a short presentation I can sh so I can talk to you about the uh, project, and then I can uh, start uh, talking a little bit about it to you guys. And, uh, Uh, okay. So what I was uh, trying to do with this project is um, try to uh, work with, uh, in our classes, in language classes, with uh, uh, questions of gender identity and sexual uh, orientation. And uh, this project started a couple years ago when I was actually teaching a class and one of my students in class, a, a male identified student said, in, our target language. My husband is a doctor, and I was being observed by one of the coordinators at the college. And, uh, and uh, during my uh, peer evaluation, uh, they said that I should have uh, corrected the student in class when he said that his husband was a doctor. So that idea of I should have corrected the student is what stuck with me. And then I started working and thinking about queer pedagogy. How do we? bring this into our class, uh, our classes. So what I've done with the uh, project, uh, 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 so thinking of what we can bring to the classroom, that we can talk about gender ident identity and sexual orientation. And finally, and what I'm going to show you guys is the uh, development of a website. And the website now is online and it's open. It's a clear uh, LRC, Columbia, the team I'm going to show you guys, in which uh, the idea is a, an ongoing website that is going to offer uh, ideas, suggestions, activities in multiple languages. It's an open source and it's open for people to come and join and uh, offer suggestions and activities. So we're going to keep growing the website. So, uh, so this is what I was working. So just briefly, in two minutes, what I'm working here is the questions of gender, identity, and sexual orientation. So with the idea of a spectrum. So that nowadays, a lot of people are not necessarily talking about only being gay or being straight or, or being a man or being a woman. We're talking about the idea of spectrum. And my main concern was what in Portuguese and Romance languages, it's uh, the question of a uh, uh, gendered, like gendered language. How do we work with the question of, uh, like in English, people are using they as a singular in terms of uh, I, to avoid uh, the uh, nominating specific genders. And uh, this has been accepted in, by uh, English grammar and English views. 
But how do we bring that into class? So our students come to our classroom saying that they do not, they do not identify a man or woman, or they are non-binary, genderqueer, uh, and other possibilities in the spectrum. So how do we bring this into classroom? So if we're talking about sexual orientation, it might be a little bit easier because you, you're gay, you're bisexual, you're straight, and then you can just present a so, sort of a vocabulary. But once, when, what do we do when our languages do not necessarily offer what the students is trying to communicate? And this is what I was thinking in Portuguese or Spanish, the question of, if a student comes to my class and says, I'm no binary and I go by they, how do we do that in Portuguese or Spanish? So this idea, the idea of the grant was section to try to find solutions for or, or suggestions for people who work with this. Uh, gender grammar, this is uh, all materials that are available on the website. It's a uh, a grant. I, uh, I did some research collecting sources from different associations and uh, what they use and what they use to identify themselves. One of the main ideas of the project was actually to have people to talk about themselves the way they want to be talked about or the way they want to express themselves. So we got the Trans Student Association, uh, Trans Student Resources. This is from New York City. Uh, New York City as of last year accepts 31 gender denominations if you live in the city. So you have 31 options when you are when you are to identify yourself, it could be bi gender, cross cross yes, or drag queen, drag queen, uh, fan queen. Uh, these are only 31 of the possibilities that people are using nowadays to talk about their gender. So how are we going to bring this into our classes? Or maybe we're not. But it's a question that I want to pose to everybody who's teaching a foreign language here in the, in the U.S. Uh, this is a research from 2015 that it was part of a, my idea that from the past 10 years, the number of students in American universities went up from 10 to 20 percent of students who do not identify as straight, cis person. It's a, it's a big raise of from 10 percent to 20 percent. Again, those are some of the uh, possibilities that we have for identification: agender, asexual, aromantic, cisgender, and how do we? bring this into our classes. This is from, I added this last week, this is from last week, New York Magazine, they're talking about baby, which are families who are raising their children genderless. So they're not using the word baby, they're using the word baby. So is it possible to raise your child entirely without gender from birth? I'm not here to answer the question. I'm here to present question that we're asking, people are asking ourselves. So if you go to New York Magazine, you have this, uh, it's a full article talking to families who are, they're called like gender creative parents, who are raising their kids uh, with no specific gender. So this is what we're, we're talking about. So how do we bring this into our classes? So what I did is, so we have a couple of meetings here, uh, first meeting in October, in which I presented the uh, topic, the idea, the discussion. A second meeting where we, uh, I wanted to put students and faculty together so we could discuss uh, together. And in that meeting, we had some key scenarios, like what do we do if we have this situation in class? So students had a chance to actually talk. And a lot of the website that I put together is also questions that the students were uh, presenting. And uh, I had suggestions from the students, like what should we do in class? And so this is what we did. As I said, the website is uh, if you get a queer.lrc.columbia.edu. This is an ongoing website. It's there. It's published, and it's going to be there. We're going to keep uh, feeding the website. Right now, we have this, and I have uh, Bernard is here. He's, he helped me with the website, or he did the website. He didn't help me. He developed the website, we did it together. He was a uh, part of the grant. It was a student that could actually help me. Bernard's a PhD student here in London. And he put together the website and my ideas into an online face. Uh, thank you, Bernard. And thank you for being here. And, uh, uh, well, yes. So, this is what we did. Uh, 
Did you have my the color change? We're thinking of color, but it's fine. It's a uh, we're working on this, but basically what we have here is all queer pedagogy, and then uh, Bernard did a beautiful thing with writing queer pedagogy in multiple languages. And, we're, uh, and it's, if you click here, it's a YouTube video that uh, shows uh, how, uh, like, in different languages, uh, and it goes changing the queer pedagogy in. Oh, it was just changing. Sorry. And uh, about is what do we do? And uh, we had it here. They did it. The site, the site is fluid, fluid because it's such a gender word nowadays that everybody's talking about gender fluid. I'm a fluid person, and the website is fluid. The website is going to change. And uh, about is uh, again the uh, information and what do we do here. Uh, so you get an idea of a. Uh, while we're doing the project. And tips, this is gonna be changing. And uh, we have here like things that I collected from talking to students. So like, do not read class, last year is allowed. So students were talking about this idea of not reading all their names in class because some students' social names do not match their rosters or their uh, identity names. So calling out names it could be uncomfortable for some students. And uh, uh, there not be an assumption of gender identities. Again, students are talking about what I look does not necessarily match what I am or what I do or, what, or how I live my life. Again, assumptions of sexual orientation, which is exactly what happened to me as a teacher when the coordinator made an assumption that that person was straight. And, and then things that uh, pronoun, uh, diversity. So right now we have the content here for people to come and bring uh, so resources. We're going to be adding more languages as we go. So the resources are for everybody. So we have now, it's what I, we have, the learning, what we have available with those languages. So if you teach some other, a different language that is not here, you have something that could be reaching for the website, just send me and then we're going to keep adding languages. So you go to any language, and so Portuguese. And this is, uh, it's the gender unicorn, it's in Portuguese that you can uh, use, or if you go to Japanese, it's the same, but it's, in, it's a gender unicorn in Japanese. This was made by the Trans Student uh, Education Resources, and they made it in different languages. So we do have things that are ready for us to use. Uh, contact is just, if you need to talk right now, I'm the contact person. And bibliography, again, we're going to be adding readings here and uh, with the link for the PDF, when the PDF is available. So if you want to read more about it, you can come here. And we have a variety of uh, articles, mostly in English. We're adding things in, in, in other languages too. I added in Portuguese and Spanish because it's my specific area of knowledge or expertise, but uh, ideally we're going to have a reach beyond the bibliography in different languages. So, the website is open and for you to add, you just need to contact me and we're going to be adding things for the website. Uh, we talked about forums or discussion boards, but for now we decided not to do it because of the openness and language that the fear might come when we're alignment like hate speech, so I try to keep it unhateful for now. So this is my project. It's open and it's for everybody and everybody's welcome to join in the project, use it in your classes, uh, show your colleagues, and the idea is it's gonna be a reference for everybody who's considered queer. So if you if you're teaching, it never happened to you, but maybe one time you got in the classroom, so then it says, I'm a non-binary person. Maybe something here might help you and uh, help us uh, work with this. So thank you and uh, share the website with everybody. And if you have any questions, please.
Okay, um, let me just write it down here for everyone. Okay, uh, our next presenter will be Sonam. Yes. Uh, Sonam teaches uh, Tibetan language here, and his project is uh, all about subtitles. Um, Sonam came to us asking for help with um, designing teaching materials uh, for his courses. Um, the teaching materials they had in mind were video based. Oh, we have another card. I am not sure which camera is going to be. It's been a pleasure. Um, SK is getting ready. Um, so, uh, basically, he will, he will tell you more, uh, more, more about his project, but basically, what he did is um, he took a bunch of uh, video clips uh, from a very popular TV series in Tibet, um, subtitled them. Oh, I need to connect it. Okay. <laughs> So uh, he chose the clips in order to um, emphasize certain lexical, orthographical, or grammatical features uh, of uh, colloquial Tibetan discourse. Uh, he subtitled them and then presented them in, in class. And I think it looks like we're good here in the presentation. Um, I will be in the back if you need my assistance, but he will be happy to tell you more about this part in person. So. Yeah, uh, as uh, I was kind of introduced to you, my name is Osana Mutsen, and uh, I'm also a Tibetan language instructor. Yeah. And uh, uh, so Colombia started offering modern Tibetan, modern Tibetan since 1993. And uh, uh, I started to teach modern Tibetan since 2014. So the project is mainly about how to supplement learning materials for students to engage with the learning modern Tibetan. But I've got a problem with a few issues, such as, you know, here as we see, it says modern Tibetan. But if you, if you look at the department website, it says it is a modern colloquial Tibetan. So what is the difference between modern Tibetan and modern colloquial Tibetan? So when students register the courses, and then some people just want to focus on speaking, and not bother to read, read the text. So, and then there's another issue that we also offer so-called the classical Tibetan and the modern Tibetan. And then, among the people who take the courses, there are imbalance in terms of the core skills of the language. So some want to focus on the speaking, some want to focus on the reading. So there are students who take both classical Tibetan and the modern Tibetan. So when it uh, reaches a third year level, we in modern Tibetan class, we engage more with the text as well as all the other aspects of language. But then those who also taking Classical Tibetan, they don't want to read. So, I've got the issue of, you know, uh, to balance the demands and uh, expectations of the students. And uh, another issue is, especially the, at the third year level, there's no such textbook which is designed for so-called the third year or advanced level of teaching modern Tibetan as a second language or foreign language. There's no such text which is published, you know, officially so far. So, so I've got this issue of, you know, to uh, kind of, you know, supply 
what students are expecting from the courses. So I try to kind of you know uh, think of uh, video clips for students to uh, those especially who are interested in listening, comprehension, and uh, reading, you know, uh, speaking. So I supply some video clips and then. then uh, the students kind of suggest it's a good if a uh, subtitle comes with video clips and also just video clips from from YouTube such as you know so it is not much kind of you know edited uh, furnished or orientated there's no specific uh, purpose or expectation uh, for the students to to engage with these video clips so uh, because of all these problems with uh, a different interest from students and also at another level another level some students after completing first year or second year or third year go into the real society like the Tibetan communities and they at all levels they might uh, some of them have already expressed that you know some of the staff we have uh, studied in the class in the class are not quite widely used in the community so the, in the community I hear people say for example it's a very good so we love uh, it is very good how, how we say it may not used or people do not use this in a real uh, community or in the, in the street if I speak to the people in the street they do not I do not hear this expression and why we didn't learn that or questions such as that, like that and uh, also people come up came back with the idea that oh in a real in a real situation in a real life uh, people it's a difficult for us to understand difficult to understand the, the, the native speakers uh, to engage with them so I thought the videos might help, video, video clips, you know, uh, taken out from real situations or, or, and then I came up with uh, this idea of asking for a grant from the language committee to help me or to support me with this. So I'm, I'm, I'm not good at kind of, you know, uh, downloading videos from YouTube and then edit them and I do this and then, then uh, uh, do the subtitles. So, so I got all these uh, supports from the language the resource center, especially in Simon. And, uh, uh, and then, and then uh, uh, I kind of you know, uh, asked for grants to support me with uh, uh, kind of producing 30 short videos. That is a range between 15 to 40 seconds. That, and then a longer video version. So the short one, the short one is I, I, my initial kind of you know, uh, application for the grant is uh, I, want to, I want to facilitate students to, to support them to learn uh, how certain constructions are used in certain situations and then how certain uh, vocabulary are used in certain situations. Also, it comes with the embedded cultural experience, the staff, you know, authentic experience of engaging with the materials and then I also kind of got a suggestion that instead of just providing information and can can you think of you know, how to facilitate students to engage with the uh, uh, in terms of the interaction you know speaking the target language so I uh, with the, all this idea in mind and then uh, I kind of you know identified a few things few things and then, then uh, mainly kind of uh, and then and then I uh, proposed a drama t TV drama series and then it's about a 40 series episodes and try to identify certain construction which goes with the textbooks so instead of making a video by myself uh, you know asking people to act so I already kind of you know uh, used uh, the materials already there on YouTube success and then 
So then the short videos is for to show how a certain construction is used. It's a very short. So if we take an example, so um, how to greet, for example, how to pick up phone calls. This, as an example, this video is a 25 seconds and it is a, a design for students to see how uh, this person takes up the form form. So there are, these are the constructions which are included in the textbook we use for first year and second year. So, so that means elementary and intermediate level. So this, this construction is already in the textbook, but the textbook it does not, uh, of course, provide this video image. So after learning this construction, I also ask students to watch this to see they identify the constructions, such as, and then also it is good for them how the native speakers use this specific, specific construction in a kind of normal situation. So this is uh, just a technical So this, yeah, this man, so do you mean, do you mean, so uh, the, 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 Phone caller is asking this lady to go out for dinner. So she, oh, you mean you know, uh, this restaurant? So the, the person, the speaker asked her to meet at that restaurant. So the, do you mean this restaurant? So this construction. So that's all about this construction. And then also, uh, you know, the, uh, the way she picked up the phone call at the beginning, So the, some people ask us, you know, uh, how do you answer a call? So the, what, do, what expression do you use? So this person says a way. So there are, when I use this specific video clip in the classroom for first year as well as second year and then not third year for short, short videos, and then come up with the different uh, questions and then these questions are good for, that I found is very useful for students to share with, within, or with, within themselves to, to do conversation activities. Uh, what do you understand of this? Some people, they think that this, uh, the way the expression is originated from the uh, Chinese language. And, uh, and then some people think, Starting the classical Tibetan, they have got a different idea about these expressions. So these are a good uh, situation for students to engage with a situation to interact in the target language. So although it is a very short, like a 20 second, but students still can engage with this. Not necessarily understanding all, but uh, at all levels. It's, a, it's, a, it's a useful both in terms of providing information and use as a situation to interact with the uh, student themselves to, to practice together. So this is just a one example. And then, then, so I try to, when I kind of, you know, uh, edit the videos, I try to identify, uh, for the longer videos, a few things. This is uh, a TV drama from today, from today. So from today, the center today. That's the kind of you know, dialect. There are so many dialects in Tibetan speak, and uh, we try to focus on the people who uh, from the center of Tibet. We, we said that. And uh, so I, I try to identify a few things such as like uh, social change. 
also the fruit. Fruit is another another area. Watching this, then students are encouraged, encouraged to read the actual, actual uh, object, literary poems. So I thought these are kind of you know, advantages of uh, using this uh, video, video stuff, and then it encouraged the students to do more, for example, all the way through like And uh, another area is that 80% uh, uh, of students who enroll in modern Tibetan so are graduate students. So they are already exposed, most of them already exposed to, uh, you know, the content, so-called the content, the culture aspects of things. And then uh, the video usage, there are, at the third year level, this, for example, this academic year, there are two, two students at the third year level are PhD students, linguistic PhD students. So while watching this, uh, while uh, watching these videos, one of the students uh, really took uh, the definite particle as uh, his uh, uh, area to do his uh, PhD thesis research. And also the usage of a relative close, how relative close are used in a kind of you know, uh, everyday life situation. 
how how the spoken is uh, very different from from literary literary uh, texts. So all these for for different for different students, and they found some kind of different interest throughout the watching or using the video clips. So. Having used these video clips this academic year, my experience of uh, the reaction from the students are, are at all levels is a bit different. Why right? they feel more kind of you know, uh, comfortable with the, not only with the language itself, uh, but also the, about the language, about their experience. They feel more like they have been there or kind of that kind of you know, experience. So they are more confident when they speak, there's a, when they uh, interact with the me or within themselves, there's a, there's a difference of uh, confidence level to engage with the language. And uh, so, as I said at the beginning, since we haven't got a, a so-called uh, textbook for third year level, so the video clips are kind of prepared for this year, I might go to uh, use this, incorporate this as a part of the curriculum for third year students. So this will be a uh, going to be textbook for third year level students. Um, that's my kind of next stage of uh, the project. So the question was, uh, you mentioned the, uh, the, the clips, are, are you in contact with the, this, I guess, the, the production studio or whatever it's about? I mean, in order to use this as a, you know, as a, as a third year, uh, I guess, uh, book, so to say, so textbook, so to say, uh, are they, are you working in link with them or how does that, how does that play out? Uh, yes. Uh, I kind of work, before I answer your question, I kind of uh, worked uh, on video clips. First, I proposed this uh, TV series, drama, TV drama series. And then some students, others said, this TV drama series produced in Latin, in Tibet. And then some students just want to engage with the, the language used in diaspora, diaspora, exile. So I also prepared the courses. It's a difficult for some students to go to Tibet. The visa application and the permit is complicated. So they choose to go to India or Nepal to do their research. So, so the my kind of project, this video subtitle project, didn't kind of you know, confine to the TV drama because of the expectation or demand from students. Now some students are kind of you know uh, specifically some. Some are from the religious department, so they are more interested in uh, listening to Buddhist masters to teach or to give a, uh, oral kind of teaching. So I also prepared some 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 uh, Buddhist theme based uh, oral teachings. So uh, yes, I am in contact with all these producers producers uh, to get permit uh, from them and. Uh, to in incorporate all this into a textbook. Yes. Are there any other? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm Grace from the Science Department. Um, so you've, you've taken these to class already, right? I already used it in the class. Most of the video clips I already used, and then my experience kind of identified constructions, uh, also. Uh, what should we include? Uh, these are based on the feedbacks from students. Uh, so it's a kind of, you know, I didn't kind of uh, do that at one time. So 
So uh, first semester, I kind of uh, distributed some uh, forms to ask for feedbacks from students. Oh, that's great. And we were wondering, do you use the videos also for uh, teaching love culture? Yes. The, um, for the there's a two versions. One is shorter one. One is a longer one. The longer one I use for advanced level students. So when I use them, uh, normally I just uh, uh, go with flow. Whatever students come up, you know, the questions come up, I just follow that. And then, then there are some details. I, I, I sometimes I draw their attention to, such as you know, all these people like a TV drama. How the intro design is kind of arranged, for example. How intro design is arranged. So, so comparing and contrast. So comparing their uh, experience of watching uh, videos from Tibet and uh, videos from outside of Tibet. What are the differences, for example? And uh, and then some certain behaviors. Well, if you serve a tea to a guest, you know. So, what part of your know, body language they, they, they engage in? So, I ask them to pay, you know, pay attention not only the language itself, but also the body language, the things, the things we see in the on screen. So, yeah, yes, it's, it's a yes, a yes answer. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Well, if there are not, thank you, Sam, for your presentation. And, uh, our last presenter for today is Wesley Strachman, the French department. Uh, who will talk to us about how uh, satire and comedy can be especially in uh, language language teaching in the classroom. Do you have a presentation? Yes. Okay. Do you need help loading it up? Mm -hmm. My name is Wesley. I'm a lecturer in the French department. I'm very happy to talk to you about one of my favorite things, which is um, these comic YouTube videos that young people have started putting on the internet. Um, so my title is Video Kill Detective Star. Um, thank you for indulging me in my facile pop. I had a professor in grad school who accused me of making facile pop references in my paper one time. So since then, I tried to make as many as I could. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, just a brief history of well. Why I think this method is so effective is because I was also a product of a video instruction. So we have this sort of legendary video series called French in Action, which has kind of achieved sort of a mythical like, cult status uh, in the French tradition because it was the first uh, in-depth video series that used a complete immersion style to teach French. And uh, they used to show it on the local PBS station when I was in high school, so I would watch it. <laughs> that was my image of France. <laughs> Watching this dude with crazy hair and talk in this emphatic way. Um, actually, let me just show you a little 30 seconds of what that looked like. So he would kind of introduce each, I, I still think these are great to use today, but he would introduce the episode, and then there was a little storyline with a young girl named Mire and an American who came to live in France, so it's kind of the story of, are they going to fall in love, are they finally going to get together? And then at the end, uh, Pierre Capetz, the guy with the crazy hair, would come back on and sort of explain what you should have gained from that episode. Okay, so <laughs> you can tell me what you think. You can see it. Oui, le français, vous savez, 
le français. Voyons, où est-ce qu'on parle français On parle français au Canada, au Québec, aux Antilles, à Tahiti, en Afrique, ou encore en Suisse, en Belgique et en France. En France, on parle français. Alsace. Ok, so I was watching this in the mid 90s. This was made in the 80s, so it already looked really dated. Um, <laughs> back then. Um, so this was kind of the style. Elle va, elle va, 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 c'est le verbe aller. Ça va? Ça va. Salut, ça va? Tu vas bien? Oh, tu vas très bien. Comment vas-tu? Je vais bien, merci. Je vais bien, je vais bien, merci. Ils vont. So, what sticks with me is just the crazy hair. Okay, and I make that point because I think it's so important the image that we show the students because yeah, even though I you know, had this sort of innate attachment to French and I wanted to learn, it was still kind of a distraction. Um, yeah. Uh, enough about French. So the, uh, the strong points were full immersion, uh, no, uh, sorry, no English spoken, filmed in France with real French speakers. They attempted to create real world scenarios to contextualize language, incorporated elements of French culture, TV shows, the guignol, which are the, the puppets. Um, I still encourage my students to look at this today because I think a lot of them might find the camp retro style kind of cool. Maybe enough time has gone by that mm -hmm. it actually had the opposite effect. Yeah. Um, especially the kind of hipster students who might look at that kind of thing. Um, one of the main characters, though, was an American. He was supposed to be American, but he spoke with a flawless French accent. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> and, yeah, the students find the look too dated. So, uh, when I was a grad student at NYU, I learned to teach using what we were kind of calling the, the new generation of French in action, which was called the Chemin de Retour, that came with the textbook Gévu. They commissioned it as a real film. It had what looked like an amazing production value coming from like French in action. This looked like a real movie that you would go see in the theater. Um, the problems with it were the characters were, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but the characters were, you know, having life experiences that were maybe Old, older people experience that the students couldn't really identify with. Um, and also the, the way, so they, they basically made the movie and then would break it up into little pieces and it was kind of arbitrary how it was like broken up. And I personally found it a little hard to exploit the clips pedagogically. So these are the problems with the previous generation. So thankfully these guys came along and changed everything. <laughs> So these are the three biggest YouTube stars, uh, Norman, Natu, and Cyprien. Um, so what's immediately appealing about these videos is that the comics are young, slightly older than the students, so relatable. Okay? Um, it's not something that's designed to instruct, so it doesn't feel contrived. It's a real cultural product. Okay? These are what these kids think, or what these young people think. Uh, what they find funny, what frustrates them, you know, their comments on modern life in France. Um, it's personal and universal at the same time, and it looks fresh. It's, you know, <laughs> they're recent. The language is current, the look is current, and they're really funny. Most important. Um, they've actually become so, I went to France, and that was two years ago. I could not believe no man was on a Fanta ad. They've actually become pretty famous in France. Uh, Macron showed up to Cyprien's book signing a couple years ago. He's a fan of Cyprien. And they've actually been commissioned to make a short... The, the short comic videos are really popular on TV in France. So they actually are doing a show on Théophane, which is like NBC or CBS in France, a big uh, network. I'm not super impressed with Pascal Dut. Uh, still... <laughs> I don't know what I think about it. I think their YouTube videos are better. Okay, so what is my project? The project is transcribing the videos, 
uh, checking the subtitles. There are people on the internet, the subtitles are open, so we're all collectively working to subtitle the videos. And they're all pretty good so far. Part of my project was to verify the subtitles. I probably won't have to do anything. Uh, so the uh, transcribing is a big part. And then creating worksheets for the videos that include activities, as well as the transcription, and then making these available to the public. OK? So the main thing for me is the worksheet. How do you make the worksheet to exploit the video? Um, so you want to think about what vocabulary, what grammar you could exploit. Um, I'm going to be arranging the videos by theme to help organize for vocabulary. Um, and I find that these videos, like really, when I watch it, I instantly know what this video, what I can use to teach. Like I don't, I don't know how, but it just seems like a gift. <laughs> it just or, right for exploitation. Um, okay, so what I've handed you is one example of one of the worksheets that I've prepared. So I think it's good to have some kind of warm-up warm -up activity to contextualize the video. So I'm going to show you an example called My Vie en Dessin, which is a draw of my life. Okay. Norman is going to tell you his life story and the little drawings. Okay? So I gave the students three questions to sort of help them contextualize the video. So the first one is, um, think of three important events uh, that happened during your childhood and explain these uh, events to your partner using the passé composé. Okay? The next one, what were you like when you were little? What, what, kind of, what was your attitude? What was your personality like? Were you happy or sad? Um, last, what did you like to do when you were a kid? Did you like to play with others, or did you like to spend time by yourself? Norman talks a lot about his childhood in the video, so the context is sort of thinking about your early life. Okay. Um, the activity that you could design while they're watching the video. So this can be kind of tricky. I'm sure you all tried to do something while you're watching a video, it's not easy. So it just needs to be really, really simple. Something like what, you know, make a list of objects you see on the, you know, on the screen, or you know, you can make a list of something and they can just do little check marks. I like true, false questions, nothing that requires writing paragraphs or nothing too intense, okay? It's probably best to show the video more than once if they have an act not an activity that they do while they're watching the video, but you can show it once show them the activity, let them watch it again, and think about it, and then do the activity. Okay. Uh, so yes, so warm-up activity is something to do while watching the video or immediately after, and then some kind of follow-up activity that builds on the video, the transcription of the video, and then a glossary of key terms. Okay, so that's this whole package. Okay, uh, I'm just going to show you this one example, my view on this one. Okay, so I gave some detailed instruction about how I would do this. Um, the great thing is you can put the subtitles in French. As I said, I'll do them in English for you guys. Okay. All right, so I'll just let you watch the video. Really adorable. Right? Um, Okay, so if you take a look at the packet again, so the way I set this one up, so immediately working on the past tense, that's what it stands out, okay? So after you do the, the warm up questions, you play the video one time. So what I did, this is not a transcription, and you know, he's speaking in the first person, so I just put sentences in the third person to sort of outline the major points that he says. So the first thing that they do is conjugate the verbs in the passé composé with Avoir. So one of the best examples is helping verbs is avoir. So you page of that. Okay. So then you can show the video again. You turn the page. So they have the answers to the first one, and then the best example, the best example is like this place the, the predator in French. So it's like the simple past tense. Okay. So then you do the one with the helping verb with et. Okay. And then you can show it a third time. You turn the page. All the best example is done. So now you just have sentences in the imperfect tense. So this one you can show three times. So 
So first time, passé composé agua, passé composé with that, go ahead and import it. Okay? Um, and then you have a complete transcription of the video. So what I try to do is really encourage the students, I tell them, if you can find the time to go home and just watch it one more time, maybe don't even watch it with the, the image, just read the text and train your ear to recognize the words that you're seeing, okay? Um, and So, I mean, you never know if they're actually going to do that, but I do hear them talking about Cyprian and Norman and those little comments, so it's sinking in somewhere, so I feel like some of them are watching. And um, our student worker in the French department, I walked by her desk the other day, she was watching a Cyprian video on her own. Okay, I didn't know her, but they're watching. Okay. Um, so, just to conclude, um, I did want to sort of think against myself a little bit and think of like some, some problems that could arise. Uh, so whereas like French in Action showed a bigger cross-section of society with multiple characters, here you just have one person's point of view. But since it's funny, it's a young person, they're talking about relatable things, I think it's fine. Um, for right now, I have focused mainly on Norman and Cyprien, who are two white guys that need to do more um, with Natu. My thing with Natu is she is quite a bit vulgar than the guys, so I'm sort of still thinking about how that will fit into the classroom. Like, I mean, I chose this one on purpose to show you. There are some sex jokes in there. There are some things some people may find distasteful. Uh, the thing is, I mean, it's in French. They're probably not going to understand it the first time anyway. If they're that motivated to figure it out, that's great. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, so, and you know, and when I made the glossary, so you, know, you can choose to focus on whichever terms you want. You know, when I show this video, of course, they ask me, like, why is it easy? You know, if you are embarrassed by that, maybe put that in the glossary, so you can just say, refer to the glossary instead of talking about, you know, private parts. <laughs> you know, there are ways to make it less awkward. Um, So it's really going to depend on the instructor's style. I find this fits really well with my style, my humor. Not everyone is going to be comfortable using these. I understand that. But the thing is, there's so much more. There's so much content on YouTube now. There's got to be something out there for everyone's taste and everyone's style. This is just like a tiny bit of what exists. Okay. And uh, students could be intimidated by the fast-paced speech. This was a problem before the subtitles, but now almost all the videos are subtitled. The students are much more comfortable, I think, and they'll have the transcription. And you just got to throw them in the, the deep end of the pool and they'll fall you down. That's why they have to be used to it. So other YouTubers to explore, this is a group called The Whoop, a more diverse group, but their comedy is much more physical, less spoken, so I'm still exploring um, you know, ways to create a diversity of representation. Okay, so the last thing is, so my idea is that using the videos and maybe using some other supplementary materials, you can actually get rid of the textbook that tries to do all of that in one, break it down into elements. So the videos will be the cultural part, and I have this grammar book that I really love that I think creates wonderful sentences, so I would imagine just doing YouTube videos and then doing worksheets from the grammar book uh, based on themes. Um, that idea probably wouldn't work in a place like Columbia where we have a language requirement, we have offers so many different sections and we want to keep a homogeneity across the board. But you know, I taught for a semester at Wagner on Staten Island and there was just one section of each so I had complete control so I could easily you know, do that in a setting like that, a smaller school. Um, so, I've transcribed most of the videos that I want to use. I'm still building the worksheet, so I'm going to do something uh, similar to what, actually probably to what you're doing, set up an open source um, site where we can 
Um, you know, other people can add materials if they want to use mine. You can download what I have and change it. Everything is can be adapted to. Thank you, Leslie, for your presentation. Um, are there any questions? I think there's a question here. Yeah. yeah I, just, I was just wondering, uh, the subtitles, you said you were doing the subtitles again. Yeah. How, you said just throw them at the deep end of the pool, right? And just let them survive. But I, like, how do you work that? Because I imagine it's true that that speech, that pace is intimidating. It really, it really is. Yeah. So do you, do you first show it with subtitles, or do you then work on vocabulary first and then show it without? I mean, how do you, how do you sequence that? Because I find it's always a difficult thing. Because in a way, if you if you put the subtitles, the language is forgotten. I mean, you, you can't really focus on the form like the passing complete. It's gone as soon as there's a subtitle, right? You, but they'll hear. be in French, though. Sorry? The, the subtitles will be in French, though. The subtitles will be in French. Yeah. Ah, okay. I'll put in English right. for you guys. Okay. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I missed that part. Yeah. Right. It'll be in French. Okay. So you can go in there. Showing the first time with the subtitles in French, or with the subtitles. With subtitles in French, every time. Salut, c'est normal. <laughs> Aujourd'hui, j'aimerais vous faire une petite vidéo un peu particulière parce que j'aime tout ce qui est particulier. J'avais envie de vous dessiner euh, un truc qui s'appelle un draw my life. Le principe est super simple. Il suffit de dessiner sa vie sur un tableau blanc avec des crayons. Puis de le filmer. En français, on doit peut-être traduire ça par euh, ma vie en dessin. This one is particularly long. Mm -hmm. This will probably take like a whole class. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the other one I was going to show you, Sipia has one called What if, if the President Was a YouTuber? It's much shorter, you can do it in 20 minutes. That's a great thing, you can adapt it to any link, you know, test any grammar point. I mean, it's really. Thank you, guys. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Thank you, Sonam. Thank you, all for your presentations. Um, those were the projects that were awarded uh, financial assistance in the spring of last year. Um, we have, as you are all probably aware by now, we do have a rolling ambition. We're rolling funding for. Uh, these grant projects. So uh, the next one is going to be in the fall. Um, if you have any ideas that are you know, maybe similar to, to this or different, um, all you need to do is get in touch with us and uh, we'll be happy to guide you through the application process and then as far as we can all the way to uh, the actual deliberation that happens in the, um, in the, in the committee. Um, well, on that note, thank you so much for coming today. Um, and uh, yeah, the semester is almost over, so we'll see you no, not over yet. Maybe one more week. So stay strong, uh, and after that, have a well deserved rest of the summer. Thank you.